Hello and welcome to my Yu-Gi-Oh channel. Today we're looking at some more Cyberdark support cards. These weren't necessarily direct support, but they helped to function and support the deck in certain aspects. So for example, you can see that Cyrus Truesdale is holding a particular monster that happens to be a Roid, but works and functions within the Cyberdark archetype. This wasn't actually seen within the anime as such within the English seasons. This was actually in season four. And I think this was used against someone who was playing the various forms of Jinzos, you know, with the new support. So Jinzo Lord, Jinzo Returner, and because Zane was very much on a trap heavy deck, that really worked against him. And I think it was also at the time where Zane's heart had actually started to malfunction because he'd been so used to doing the underground jaws and he'd been using these electric shock systems every time he took life point damage. He physically jolted his heart and over that period of time that's put stress on the heart and that's why Cyrus actually had to pick up his deck and jaw for his honour. So the first card is Dragonroid. This is a level 8 wind attribute machine type effect monster with 2900 attack and 1000 defense. You can only use this card's name's first effect once per turn. One, you can discard this card, activate one of these effects, add one non-wind attribute roid monster from your deck to your hand, or this turn the activation of your cards and effects that include an effect fusion summons, a fusion monster cannot be negated. Also your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when a monster is fusion summoned this way. 2. Once per turn, if this card is in your graveyard, you can make this card in the graveyard to become a dragon type monster until the end of this turn. This, I love the design of the card, I think it has an amazing attack stat on it, and even though it has only a thousand defense, it's fine. The effect kind of makes up for it. The first ability is just when you discard this card so it doesn't have to trigger on the effect of it being summoned, it just happens to be in your hand. You're able to then immediately search for one of your non-win attribute roid monsters, that's fine, there's so many different ones you can reflexively track and go into. Although I have heard from some people that they believe that the Mixeroid is the best version and that's a wind attribute so there's a kind of a downside to that and I don't understand why it has to be a limitation. Oh I, I think I remember because it's to do with the confusion of speed roids and roid monsters um, to do with anyway. The whole story is that Cyrus Truesdale has his roid monsters, but within the speed roids archetype, you know, them having roid is a reason why that becomes a bit of an issue. I don't see why, considering that Yu-Gi-Oh! Jets happened in, you know, so long ago, 2003 or so, and the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 happened so many years later, over 10 years later than that, it should not be so much of an issue, but I think that's just to clarify their position. The secondary part of that effect to stop your opponent from technically activating anything when you try and fusion summon is also very useful because that gives your fusion monsters that level of protection. Cyrus, he has a very fusion heavy deck, so it actually works very well to provide that protection. The secondary ability is the one which you might be a little bit confused about. It doesn't actually link very well to Cyrus's deck and actually more to the storyline that happened between Cyrus and his brother Zane. It becomes a dragon type monster in the graveyard if you want it to be. That actually pairs well with Cyber End Dragon because what that does is it goes grave robbing, it searches for a monster in the graveyard that happens to be a dragon type, and then it equips it to itself and it gains the level of attack. So you would make your Cyber Dark Dragon 3,900 attack points, not counting for the additional 100 times the number of monsters you have in your graveyard. So it'll obviously become over 4,000 attack points. And the other card we've got is Declaration of Rebirth. It's a continuous trap card with the effect, once per turn you can declare one type, all monsters in the graveyards become the declared type until the end of this turn. The purpose of this card is so that you can manipulate your own graveyard. Most people would forget about the opponent's graveyard and just be able to grave rob your own to make them dragon types. And all the cyber darks equip dragon types from the graveyard to themselves enabling all of those monsters to become potential targets. He also had this funny dislike for a Cyber End Dragon, blaming it as the reason why he kept losing his matches, and he would often rip that out of his extra deck through one of his effect cards, and by doing that he would then summon his Cyber End Dragon through the effect of Cyber Dark Dragon, 
and equip it, and therefore its attack would be at base at least 5,000 attack points. That's the purpose of it within the storyline. It's also useful actually for you as a general player because it's nice. Think of it like having a DNA surgery, but that works within the graveyard. I, I would argue this is actually better than DNA surgery for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you can activate this for all of the cards in the graveyard, so it's not just yours, it's your opponents. If they're running any specific types of decks, they're not able to use any of those monsters if they're not designed that way to be revived, so that's a bit of a disaster for them. For example, Book of Life is useful for zombie type monsters, but say you make your opponent's monsters in the graveyard's dragons, your opponent can't activate that effect. They've got a dead card in their hand. The secondary part of the effect actually really is helpful, more so just to disrupt your opponent, even if you're not really going to use it yourself. So what do you guys think of these two cards? Are you surprised by the secondary one? For me, I was very surprised to see it actually got a better effect than its original anime version. But it, it's nice to see, and it's nice to have that level of disruption if you want to play it. I don't see that many people that are going to play it, but it might be a decent side deck card, maybe a tech card, depending on what your opponent is running. Whatever you think, leave your comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for more daily Yu-Gi-Oh! content.